Hi, my name is Mike, and today we're going to be unboxing Super Micro's 5018D FN80. And that bottle number is a mouthful because the Super Micro's product numbers are always kind of crazy. They have so many products that I kind of get it, but uh, it's kind of a nightmare to remember. But anyway, uh, I bought this system because I needed a new router. Uh, up until now, I've been using a Mac Mini as a router uh, running PFSense, and it got to the point where I decided, you know what, I wanted something uh, something uh, better than what that offered. Uh, with that, I had to use adapters, external adapters to get the number of Ethernet point ports I needed, and so forth, and it was just kind of a, a mess. Um, I mean, it worked fine, but it, but it was time for, for something that was more dedicated. Now this here is a, a PC that basically has a, a Xeon D, uh, what is it, 1518 uh, CPU in it. And so there, this has plenty of, of horsepower for running PFSense or running routing duties. I'm, even, I'm thinking of even uh, virtualizing PFSense on it so that it can run other uh, 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 network related servers on it um, like if I decided that I was going to uh, run uh, an external like maybe a Pi-hole VM or a, a other DNS server or, or intrusion detection and some so forth um, so I wanted to keep that flexibility open now this uh, here has a several different Ethernet ports um, so let's unbox it and take a look So it comes well packed. This is my first Super Micro uh, hardware that I've, I've purchased and added to the lab or in, in production. And so I'm kind of interested to see how how they uh, how the hardware is. From everything I've heard, their hardware is pretty top notch. Um, and so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this works out well for me. Now inside, uh, you'll notice they just have pretty much the box and the power cord. And so let's set the power cord aside and let's take a look at the actual rack mount itself. Wrapped in a bag. Really not much to it. Uh, so let's get this out of the way. And I'll keep this because I have something to set on it. So, yeah, it looks like well, they have a silica gel packet. Get that out of here. So there are six uh, regular one gigabit Ethernet ports on here uh, along the front and two 10 gig uh, SFP plus ports. And so, and that was one of the requirements that I really wanted. I wanted to be able to uh, have something that had 10 gigabit ports on it. I have a 10 gigabit network internally. Um, and while I don't have an external 10 gigabit connection, which I would love to have, uh, and so I don't need to do full routing at 10 gig, but uh, with when uh, transmitting packets between VLANs, uh, I would like to be able to do that at a decent uh, line rate, without um, without the switch that I was looking at previous. Or I I have a Microtik switch that that will let me do inter uh, inter VLAN routing, but uh, I kind of wanted to do that on a real uh, router hardware. So, so anyway, that's why I chose this one. There's actually a, a PCIe slot here, uh, and so I can add uh, more ports or so something uh, in the long run. USB, VGA, um, couple. This one here I think is a is a, a gigabit um, management port, and so I, this is a I believe it's a tenth generation. Uh, super micro management and so um, I, I believe it's it's HTML based uh, uh, admin interface that it has and allows remote like KVM and so forth like that uh, but I, I don't know it's not their latest uh, I think their latest is 11th generation at this point um, but anyway it's pretty small um, there's not a lot to it which is good one reason I chose this device is that it, uh, I mean, I have an extra R710 sitting down down there in the lab that like it probably could do fine as, as a router. Um, but the reason I chose this is just, I mean, basically power draw. Uh, this will pull about 30 watts under load and uh, that's 
at, at least four or five times that, uh, even even uh, in a bit bare uh, configuration. Uh, so let's see if we can. I don't know if we can uh, take pop the top off this thing. Take a look inside. So it looks like there are two screws on each side. I guess it's it's worth mentioning the other thing that I uh, the other reason I chose this this particular setup was that it was a front mounted port and that was something that as as having it as a router was kind of important to me. I wanted something that would um, have the ports on the front so I wouldn't have to go digging around the back every time. I was trying to, to plug something extra in. Now, having six one gigabit ports is kind of more than I need. Um, obviously, one's going to be a WAN, and I would actually uh, uh, I, I wanted to keep the option open to having a second WAN port, and so possibly could use two WAN ports. Um, internal, like I said, we'll, I'll be using the SFP Plus ports and. And then, uh, and so that's that's the plan for the time being, um, but but the other four one gigabit ports, I don't know what I'm going to use them for. I, maybe I'll have one on a completely separate DMZ, just because right now I have um, a DMZ as a as a VLAN, um, but I kind of don't even like having that on the same hardware. I'd rather have that on a separate switch and and everything else just. Um, to feel better about not having it accessible to, to any other um, uh, machines on the network. But it, but that still leaves three ports left, and so I, it's, it's definitely room to grow. Um, but that's, and so that's, yeah, this offered more than what I needed. Now inside, oh, this looks pretty tight. Um, here you have the, the Xeon chip here, has three different fans. And yeah, it looks like you could just pull them out. It, it looks like the um, they're just loose in here, and they're they're on like rubber grommets or something, so they kind of float. I don't know. Hopefully that means it's not that loud of a server. Um, but it looks like that with this just a case holding them down, they're not going to be going anywhere. Um, so it has the power supply here. Power supply is. A 200 watt power supply, which I'm thinking is way excessive for for the power draw on this system. But hey, I guess it's it's good to have uh, a little bit extra headroom there. Now you can put two and a half inch uh, drives, and it looks like you can put two of them in here, and you still have a couple of PCIe slots here. Um, and it comes with one riser. I think it's an 8x port. Yeah, it's an 8x port, um, and so uh, that's that's that. I think there's this here is uh, what is that? I'm not sure what that is. It looks like it's an internal USB port, um, but there I know there's also a way to, to actually they have they sell storage on a stick kind of thing where if you're gonna just run something for like if you're running ESXi on it that you just have a small install. Uh, they have like a like a flash memory thing that you can mount on the board. Now this doesn't have any memory in it or anything. It came as a, or, or storage. Uh, it came as a bare bone unit. Um, and so I purchased uh, uh, 16 gigs of ECC memory and uh, a Samsung 970 Evo, a 500 gig SSD. Um, now this is an NVMe drive and uh, on the motherboard they do have a place to put it. Uh, right here, and so the plan is to have pretty much all everything all embedded on it um, and set to go. So uh, I I'll be posting more videos, I'm sure, on this box as time goes on. Uh, just to, once I get it set up and just to show that, and once I get everything uh, in the rack and, and ready to go. Um, so yeah, stay tuned to the to the channel for that. Thanks for joining me on this one, and I'll see you in the next video.